Um, <clears throat> well, let's see. Can I can I get an extra? Is there an extra of the big one? So the big one is actually a first chapter in, um, I don't have it posted on the web. Um, it's actually first chapter in the book, you can see on the last page. So that's kind of the starting place, um, is the English translation of the book. Um, but I, I made a copy of the first chapter just <clears throat> so you can, um, you know, if you're interested to read a little bit more about you know, is that one cheat sheet expanded if you want? Um, and also the page 22, if you turn to page 22, you'll see example uh, five. It's basically the example we did last time with that x double dot equals u. u is constrained between positive and negative one. And then you see this combination of the two face planes, face portraits, right? One for e equals positive one, one for e equals negative one. Um, and also, well, and, and it gives a solution to that. And also example on the page 26 is actually the one I was trying to plot in class last time and I wasn't very successful with the circle. So that kind of the harmonic oscillator that's controlled. Um, and if, if you look on page 28, you can see the two face portraits are basically concentric circles. One is centered around 1, 0. One is centered around negative 1, 0. So the trick is how do you actually combine the two face portraits, right? So that's why I was saying it's a little bit complicated to do it by hand because uh, we'll just... Let's see, if you look on uh, page 38, I'm just kind of skipping... Uh, a lot of, of stuff here, but so you see on page 38, you kind of see the the type of switches that are maybe needed when you swing that pendulum, right? When you force that swinging pendulum, um, and you have to hop basically on different, you know, maybe u equals positive one, then maybe u equals negative one. So it's kind of you're trying to br bring it to a Right to 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 a uh, full stop in least amount of time. So you may need to um, to do a bunch of of maneuvers, basically. Okay. Depending on how how big the uh, initial momentum, if you want, or or displacement. Okay. And I only copied chapter one because chapter two starts with the proof of this principle. And it's not the most, well, that's kind of the when it all started. But in the meantime, there's been more, um, well, simpler, quote unquote, um, proofs of this maximum principle. And we won't be actually talking about any of that. On the page 38. Yep. X, the The switching is every time uh, at each point of this. So it switches at D, C, B, and A. Exactly. Okay. So you, because if you look at these arches, these are arches of circles centered at plus one or minus one. If you. It's hard to see, isn't it? Um, but the centers are. It's kind of you take a circle and you kind of move it. You stay on the same circle, but at the center of the circle, you move it to plus and minus one. Okay. And um, I, one of my desires, which never materialized, was to show you actually a movie of this. You know, where you, you can basically, you know, you can actually have 
the computation over time of the control, and then just um, basically plot that pendulum or whatever spring mass, right? And to see how it's how it actually gets controlled. Um, and then next time you swing a, a child on a on a swing, although they they seem to have disappeared from the parks, I don't know why. Um, anybody knows? I don't know. Lots of parks now have no swings anymore. Um, and trash cans, trash bins, right? <laughs> we knew that. We knew that. Okay, so it's probably related. But um, uh, next time you, you push somebody on a swing, and if you try to stop that that from swinging, you will see that it's actually going to be exact. You know, to do it, you almost do it. You know how to do it. I mean, without you know unconsciously, you know how to do it, and you're going to do it right after it's it's reached sort of a it passed the um, the uh, you know the vertical right but not not just then but just a little bit past that so these little circles are this, the switch times is, is kind of you're mimicking that without realizing it that's why um, but I don't know maybe one of these days I'll make a movie of that but, um, <clears throat> okay so that's so again, I said that there's going to be the proof is not going to be one of our concerns here because that's a class in its own. Um, I have a handout that I usually um, give it kind of early when one talks about Lagrange multipliers, um, but probably it's more appropriate now to to give it. So this is the other like one page, two pages. Um, in which I kind of uh, say a few words about this whole field of calculus of variations um, that probably if you do classical mechanics you're familiar with but um, also in geometry there's a lot of a lot of this stuff you're trying to, to find uh, paths of least distance on surfaces for instance um, and then, then you end up with with cost functionals, so so functions of the paths, right, or the trajectories. Uh, so here, I think I give you an example of of uh, how do you find the shortest path between two points, right? So again, I'm not kind of uh, going to talk too much about this, but there is kind of some in inherent equations that come with. Uh, with this L, which is called the Lagrangian of that of that problem, okay, L is the integrand. So there is some uh, so-called Euler-Lagrange equations, one for each state uh, variable, right? And if you uh, think about this, this is kind of a second-order equation in in time. So it's Think about it as Newton's law, right? So, in fact, I think the, the back of this page you're going to see how this is actually the same as Newton's law of motion. If it is, if it is a particle kind of moving in a in a straight line, um, then I talk about how how you actually derive this. So, if you if you're interested, you can you can follow that. Uh, but the main point is is that. Instead of writing, instead of treating a second-order equation or a system of equations, you can look at a, well, let's say one equation, right? So for each of these equations, which is second order in time, you can split into a system of two first-order equations, right? By introducing new variables, right? So these new variables are the momental variables. Again, it depends on the kind of applications, but and how you do that, you introduce this, this Hamiltonian. Okay. Do you see a resemblance of what we do now uh, in, in our in Pantragian in the maximum principle? You see that the, the type of the way the Hamiltonian is constructed is basically the uh, these are the co these are the adjoint variables, those shadow variables, size we call them size, right? Times the rates of change of the variables. These are the right hand sides of the dynamical system, right? And then minus L, well. This is minimizing functional, so to maximize it would be putting minus L. So this is the F naught, right? 
it's kind of the same construction. The only problem here, I mean, the only thing that we do different is we have control. So we have, you know, we have an additional variable u that's kind of hidden in the state in the state dynamic dynamical system, right? And possibly in the in the Lagrangian. Okay, but the the important thing is to realize is that uh, Hamilton Hamiltonian equations, well Hamilton system, Hamiltonian system, excuse me, has this has this uh, looks like this. So it has for each of the x one through x n, there is corresponding psi one psi n, right? So again, if you look in that in that um, cheat sheet of the maximum principle, you recognize the second equation. What was the system satisfied by psi? The derivative of psi with respect to time is minus the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the state variables. Okay. Now, we, you don't really see the first equation because, well, because the first equation is just a rephrasing of the state of the dynamical system, right? So. For us, the dynamical system, by now you should memorize that uh, <laughs> cheat sheet, I think, unfortunately. It's probably the easiest way. Or just have it handy. Uh, let me. Okay. So, again, the. Yeah, in fact, I actually wrote it here, right? So. So the deep side, the uh, deep side j d t is minus a partial of h with respect to x j, and why is this happening? Why is the the x j d t is partial of h with respect to size? Anybody? Just wonder. You don't sleep with this under the, under your pillow at night yet. What do you think is, uh, I say that. Well, what's the partial of h with respect to each psi? To psi 1. F1, right? Well, that's just saying dx1 dt is f1. So it's just a re rephrasing of that original system, right? But again, I think I mean there's there's always this unease of okay, why is that? What is that Hamiltonian? Why why is it the way it is? Well, there's a lot of history and again, a lot of analogies, but uh, mainly it's just kind of a useful re restatement, rephrasing of of your um, of your of your dynamical system in terms of this new set of variables. Okay. Um, Does it make sense? Probably not. Yeah. Looks looks similar, right? <laughs> okay, and, and actually, uh, if you flip the page, you will see the, an example of um, again a very kind of the most the simplest example of uh, how you can how we can think of this Euler Lagrange equations well you, see, you think of them as just being Newton's law of motion if it's just one variable right uh, and how do you think about the Hamiltonian well it turns out that it's just the total energy that's the kinetic plus potential energy all right uh, but again it's it's a stretch to say that if you understand this you'll understand the contracting maximum principle why, why, why it works, but um, I think, as I said, I, I'd like to fo focus on how it works rather than why, uh, and just be able to work a few pro concrete problems. And the um, last thing that I'm going to point out here is um, there is actually a, well, there's lots of you know, resources uh, kind of recent in the last year or so um, that kind of automate this thing. So one of them is this, there's a toolbox uh, developed by a group in Slovak Repo Republic, I believe, 
Um, so you can read a little bit about this, um, of how it's actually computed. But I will tell you that it's not, so this toolbox is not really working uh, the, is not doing the steps that we do in the, um, in the Pontarian maximum principle. Okay? But it's kind of trying to achieve the same goal of finding optimal controls for very similar problems. So what I'll do is I'll just show you. Um, once you, you can download these things to your machine. Let's see here. So it has a kind of a long um, guide, but. I just want to point to the type of problems that it can do. Okay, so let's take the simplest of all. So the simplest of all is this one, for instance. Okay. So you see the dynamical system that's controlled. Okay, by this u variable, you have initial conditions, right? And you have the cost function. Uh, okay, I, I'm not going to say what Meyer form is, but it's just basically the uh, st value of the second state variable at the final time, and no integral term. Okay, so no integral term. Or oh, the integral, the integrand is zero, right? Okay. So I claim that we can actually do this. I mean, one can do this by hand through the the, the procedures that, that we you know uh, we can follow on the maximum principle. But if you want to kind of ask the computer to do it, then you can run this code. And um, again, I think it's it's not that. Um, Well, it's not necessarily that revealing to see how uh, the output of this. Uh, but I'll just say that it's 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 very much like uh, the limp, l linear programming. So it has lots of um, well, it kind of searches. Okay, it has a smart way of searching through the various possible uh, strategies for for optimal control until it reaches a kind of a, a minimum, I think, in this case. OK, so um, right. So there are lots of, lots of parameters that one needs to set. It's basically set up that problem in this particular uh, uh, language. And then it has, I don't know how many iterations. I don't, I don't think there are too many, because I ran this. Um, but I just want to show you the output. Well, the output is actually. It's it's given here, so it tells you how how each uh, function is called. Okay, and this is the output. So the output is the uh, value of u versus I mean in time, right? And the value of x one and x two in time. And remember, I think the x the one that was the objective was to minimize x2 at final time t, right? So basically, this value here, so starting with 1 and 0, that's the initial condition, right? You obtain a minimum value for x2 after this one time period. Uh, if you choose this kind of, now this is actually funny here because it's not, I think this is a little bit not true, but I think this is, this is continuous here. But it may not be. It may have a jump, right? Um, so let's see. I think the okay. So yeah. See, I mean, there is there is something happening at some periods of time, but uh, this seems to be continuous. Okay. So that's that's the u. This is the x one, x two. Okay. And if you look at the output, you'll actually 
re recognize a little bit of that uh, format of this, of this LIM programming. So anyway, this is, and then you can extract things. I think you can extract the T, the U, P is the Psi, okay? Um, and you get also the parameters. And you can plot basically the, um, uh, I forgot which one has, oh yeah, I think you can, uh, you can get the value. Okay, f val is like, this is the value. That's the minimum value of the objective function, okay? Um, Again, this is not actually an implementation of the of the uh, of the uh, maximum principle, but it's you could actually um, it'd be a good exercise to to take that take this problem and you know just do it by hand. You can do it by hand and figure out what the the types of uh, the control the optimal control look like. So this is just one uh, one such uh, one such code impl implementation. Now, of course, the other one which I I, hand, I um, put a link here is this is that, is that expensive uh, package that actually implements the maximum principle. Okay. So remember, what 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 are what are the key things in the maximum principle that in the steps of the maximum principle? Well, first of all, you have to assemble this Hamiltonian, and you can you can do that no problem. Um, well, let's say if you have some sort of symbolic capabilities, right? But I think the more important thing is you have to take you have to take partial derivatives of this function with respect to to x, right? So to to actually write this in a in a in a code, what you need is you need Symbolic differentiation capabilities, right? So that's uh, that's not always very pleasant. In fact, it may not be actually very efficient. Um, so there, I mean, that's basically where the, most of the work is in those in those software to um, to accomplish those steps. Okay. Then, of course, minimizing and maximizing is not such a you know the key step, which is to maximize the Hamiltonian based for a fixed t, so as a function of u alone. Uh, this you can accomplish with a. You don't need to have symbolic capabilities, right? You can do it numerically, of course. Uh, but okay. So let me. Uh, any questions? Any comments on this? Okay, so let me um, open this one. So let, let's talk about. So, so I want to talk about uh, this homework, and then also talk about um, maybe, yeah, maybe one or two examples in that handout. Um, so, okay, so let's see. Can you ask the question again? Okay, so so there were two problems. Uh, the first one being, it's a controlled, right? Just a, rect uh, I mean, just uh, motion on, on a straight line. With an initial, with an initially at, let's say at x equals zero, but with some initial velocity. Uh, and the, the function that one wants to minimize is a combination of the distance. And it's not very correct to say it's the distance traveled, right? Because if the object travels back and forth, you know, uh, but it's kind of distance from the origin. 
and uh, plus another term, which is energy. Okay. Now, if you're a physics, you may actually debate: is this real ener energy? It's like a four square integrated. Maybe not, right? Okay. But right. So just because for simple, I mean, it, for simplicity, one can um, one can imagine this as being a penalty term, right? Penalty meaning that uh, the higher the U is, regardless whether it's positive or negative, right? So the higher the, the force right, that you apply is, the bigger this term will be, right? So for instance, if, if U is taken to be 10 for the entire duration of the, of the, of the uh, motion, right? This is going to be a certain positive number, right? The question is, can you lower that? So can you choose a different U to lower it? Well, of course, which U would lower this the most? Zero. U equals zero, right? But U equals zero means no, 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 no forcing on this. So this means this would go with a, a zero acceleration. So it would be basically the velocity wouldn't, wouldn't decrease, right? So it's probably it's likely that this term will actually be quite high, right? So you want to have some sort of a balance, maybe some positive u square, maybe some, some non-zero u for some period of time, right? That would make this term lower. And then the combination, the sum of the two would actually be lower than when u is zero, right? So that's kind of the, the idea. And um, it's also, I mean, it's also a good exercise, I think, to, before you start actually solving it, to think about, is it feasible? Is this problem feasible? Is it, is it going to have a solution? See, because it's like in the linear programming. Sometimes, if you minimize a function over a simplex, that's kind of infinite, right? And, uh, and it's, it's infinite in the, wrong, in the wrong direction. Then you may not find an optimal, right? For instance, if you want to maximize a function that is a feasible set is, is infinite in the positive quadrant, right? Then you can go as, 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 high as, you, as, as far as you want from the origin and be, I mean, the maximum would be infinite, right? That's what I'm saying. So for instance, here, if I were to maximize this, it would not be feasible, right? You would not have a, sol a solution because, well, Yeah, you just you just take u to be big and negative, right? Let's say v naught is positive. So once it passes, it keeps going, right? And the higher you, you pull it, the the farther away it goes. So so this quantity is moving uh, is it can be as big as you want, right? But it's not the same with uh, minimi minimizing. Anyway, I'm not saying this is obvi always obvious. It's not always obvious. That uh, that this problem could be could have a maximum or a minimum, but um, okay. So the key one here is that there is no control. There there are no constraints on the control. Okay. And I guess we should talk about what happens if there are constraints. But I'll let you kind of work through this um, until Wednesday, and then we can talk about the solution. Yeah. Uh, well, before spring break, so Friday is the last day, okay? But, uh, yeah? Um, so I was working on this one, and uh, I'm having trouble understanding what I should use for the terminal conditions for the size at time equals T. Um, and, and, uh, Okay. So let, let me let me address that uh, uh, right now. So uh, we'll work a problem that's very similar to this, so you can see the the differences, um, and uh, I mean the similarities and differences. So here's I'm going to hand you the uh, a sample midterm exam that I I gave uh, last time I taught this. So um, so you can see well. It's going to 
get you give you an idea of how the um, the um, exam at least the, the in class part will look like. And problem number three. So once you get that handout, problem number three says the following. It's very similar to this one. Okay, so so let's work that one out, and that should answer your question hopefully. says take kind of the opposite well it's a different problem it says I have an object that I'm I, I want to uh, it starts you know it starts at zero time zero and velocity zero and I want to uh, apply a control call it call it yes call it u right so that's the same as the same as before right you could be positive or negative. Uh, but objective is to maximize over all possible controls the following quantity okay so So it's not minimizing, it's maximizing. It's not, this is not a, a penalty term, but it's kind of a, well, wait, no, it is, it's still a penalty if it's a negative, right? So, so the problem I call it here is, is maximizing, um, uh, basic accelerating, hold on, yeah, that's to maximize its speed after a certain amount of time, right? with a minimum effort, energy, quote-unquote, possible, right? So you want to pull it as much, you know, as fast as you, I mean, as hard as you can, right? To be top speed, right? But you're going to have a penalty if you pull it really hard for a long period of time, right? So, so that may not be the best strategy, to, right? To keep you as as big as possible. Again, there's no controls, no no control uh, constraints. So, so in principle, you could apply u to be 500 from time equals zero, right? But will you get the? I mean, you will certainly get the maximum possible speed here, right? That's the uh, that's the velocity, by the way, at the final time t, but this will also be rather big, right? So the difference will likely not be maximum. Okay, so now you can see one has to be careful how you phrase this. I mean, you could, I could have called it minus u. That, that was no, and that shouldn't throw you off, right? u minus u, that's, that's just a matter of, of, um, of convention, what you call, uh, what, I mean, what, what, what quantity are you monitoring, the pulling force or the pushing force or something, you know, breaking force. Okay, so can we do this together? Can you do this on an exam? Sure can. Uh, I think you can because, look, by the way, you're going to have access to that cheat sheet. That, that's going to be with you, as I said, day and night. So you can... Um, it's it's good if you get familiar with it. So, so what are state variables? Well, position and velocity, right? Uh, what is the state dynamics? X one dx1 dt is x2 dx2 dt is u. Okay? So, what's the Hamiltonian? Well, it's a function of two shadow variables, psi1, psi2, and x1, x2, and u as follows, right? You take 
psi 1 multiplied by the right hand side of of the first equa state, state equation, right? Plus psi 2 times the second state equation plus plus what? The integrand that appears in your objective function to be maximized. So it's ma so so our j is to be maximized, so we don't have to we can just read the f naught, right? It's minus one half u, u squared. Okay. So again, this is this is just a look and identify type problem, right? So this was f one, this was f two, and this was f naught is minus one half u squared, right? Can everybody do this? I hope I hope yes. Uh, so one can assemble the Hamiltonian. Okay, don't ask what this is. This is a this is a function that's going to be useful in introducing this this shadow variables or adjoint variables or co-states, whatever you want to call them, um, so that right. So I'm going to use this just to remind you that. So this Hamiltonian is, is used so that dx i dt is partial of h with respect to psi i and d psi i over dt is minus partial of h with respect to x i, i from 1 to 2, okay? Okay, so now we could even postpone writing the system, the adjoint system, and just say, Let's just maximize h, okay? So it's like you, it's like a game you play. It's like, do I have do I first have to find what psi one and psi two look like? No, right? I know I'll be able to find it at some point, right? But you can you can choose what you want to do first, okay? And if you're like me, I want to see first the optimal control, right? In other words, can I maximize this? Well, can we maximize this with respect to you? Keeping everything else fixed. And pretending we know psi 1, we know psi 2, we know x1, we know x2, right? Then we can find uh, here, right? So we need to maximize h with respect to u over all u, so the, this is where it's important you know, to ask yourself: Is there any constraint on the on the on the constraint on the control variable or not? And I, I think we said in the problem that there is not. Okay. Now, what if what if the problem would have constraints on the control? What do you think would have to would happen? Right, so it would just be a constrained one-dimensional optimization problem. Okay. Chapter one, section one or two, right? So, so you would look at this. This is parabolic function, right? Quadratic function. It has a maximum. If that maximum is in your uh, feasible set or in the admissible con set of, of controls, fine, right? If not, you're going to just have to go to one of the endpoints. Which one? Well, it depends on which one's higher, right? But again, this is not uh, unconstrained optimization. So, so what is this? Um, well, h of u is quadratic. In u, so Again, look for the mac look for the, the vertex of that uh, parabola, right? So you take the partial of h with respect to u, so you get psi two minus u, right? And set it equal to zero. So here, here you go. You, we have found. Well, maybe I'll. I'm skipping a step here. Maybe we should. Um, So from this, 
kind of step, we found that u has to be psi 2. Now, what does that actually mean? At each time, t choose the optimal control to be the value of this shadow variable at, at time t. Okay? And now, well, we have to see what is that value. Okay? But we've actually went quite far, and I mean, we've, we've accomplished quite a bit. Um, that is, we found how to find uh, the value of the optimal control at each time t. Any questions on this? Anyway, your homework problem is very similar. It's just different signs, and you have to just be careful with the signs. But uh, in the end, it's kind of uh, it's the same steps. Um, right? Notice also that the fact that I had a minus in front of u squared was important. Otherwise, you wouldn't find a maximum, right? OK. So now, again, independent of, of, of this step, you can do the other step, which is the adjoint system. So one was the states, the state variables, right? And now is the dynamics of the adjoint variables. So sine, pri uh, deep sine. You can use primes. There's no, you know, just have to be careful. So I'm, I'm going to use d by dt. Psi 1 is minus partial of h with respect to x1. Do we have x1 in the in our Hamiltonian? No. Is it always like this? No, obviously not, right? Sometimes you will have, I mean, depending on the problem, you'll have uh, different right-hand sides there. Also, the minus sign is important. If you If you don't put this minus in front of the partial of a to respect to x1 and x2, you're not going to get um, the correct answer. But psi 2 has only appears here. Oh, excuse me. x2 only appears here, so it's psi 1, right? Okay? And now, as with every dynamical system, you have to, to basically, right? We want to find what psi 2 at each time t is, right? So we want to solve for this, well, psi 1 and psi 2. Only psi 2 will play a role. But if we don't specify initial conditions or terminal conditions, right, we won't know for sure. I mean, we'll have to do something else to figure out those constants, right? Because of, of the problem is a fixed time problem, optimal control. So. The capital T is given, right? Control. Our recipe says choose. Let me write it like this. Choose the final time, uh, final, st final um, terminal conditions for this system to be what? to be the, exactly the coefficients that appear where in the first part of your optimization problem, of, of your objective function. Okay? So it's, it's again, it's kind of a Take a look and identify those coefficients. Okay, so this is this is the important ones. These are the the coefficients in front. So for our problem, what were they? J was x dot of t plus something, right? So this is indeed 0 times x1. So x dot was x2, right? And 1 times x2. So yes, the coefficients are 0 for psi 1. I mean 0 and 1. So the terminal conditions will be 
Psi. One of the capital T is zero, and Psi two of the capital T is one. Now, keep in mind, every single step you do has its like little traps. You can get, uh, you know, you can get tricked by by appearances. So, like in your homework, you have to make sure you have the right J, right? That needs to be maximized, not minimized, stuff like that. And that will give you kind of the uh, correct terminal conditions. Okay. So finally, what do you? You have this system, and you have the, the terminal condition, so how do you solve it? Just backward in time, right? But forget the backward in time. You just solve this, and now you know where you, how to find the, those co constants that appear when you solve the system, right? So psi 1 is obviously constant. Well, what constant? At terminal time, it has to be zero. So psi 1 is zero all the time, and that means psi, psi 2 is constant, right? What constant? 1, because the time, final time t has to be 1, right? So, I mean, we don't call this a joke, because it's not, but so, so psi 1 is 0, and psi 2 is 1 by solving psi 1 prime equals 0 and psi 2 prime equals psi 1, right? And again, you solve it whichever way you can. It, it, you don't have to write it as a linear system exponentiate, right? I mean, you could do all of those, but in general, remember you have this peace of mind that you, your adjoint system is a linear system of psi, so if the worst comes to worst, you can employ those fancy Jordan canonical forms and all that, right? Well, assuming is 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 non is autonomous, it could actually it could also be non-autonomous, in which case it's uh, it still can be solved, but it, no, it's just uh, explicitly it would be a lot harder. But okay, so what? Uh, why did we look? Why why did we solve the adjoint system? Because we we found out earlier that the uh, optimal u has to take exactly this value that psi two takes, and we said psi two is one. So this means the at all times it's a constant, right? Uh, so conclusion is this is going to give you the maximum speed based on you know that penalty term of effort of, of energy right I have to tell you that this is actually not the end of the story because it's like when you uh, try to find the maximum of a function of one variable you take the derivative set it equal to zero and then do you walk away no, you have to ask yourself: Is this really a max, or is it really a min, or is it a, a an inf, you know inflection point? So, 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 this really is not. Uh, I mean, you'd have to have a second derivative test for this min-maximum principle, and and the sad news is there exists one, and uh, and you really have to go through it to 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 say that this is indeed the. the a minimum, a local, local minimum, or, or global minimum, or excuse me, maximum in this case. Um, but I think one could reach that conclusion even through other means. For instance, right? I mean, what kind of? How do we reach conclusion uh, in our class when we uh, looked at? You know, we took derivative. We, we rarely did uh, did the second derivative test, right? We took derivative set equal to zero, and then we said. Hey, that's a maximum. How do we? We drew a picture, right? 
Okay, if the picture wasn't good enough, then we looked at for other clues, right? So, so, so many, many times here, it's um, there's a, there's a similar kind of process, but again, I think it's um, a little bit beyond what we do. Um, so, so what's the? Again, this is. I mean, you can say this is very simplis simplistic, and, and it is. Um, this gives you the optimal control. With the, with the control comes with a trajectory, basically. So if you ask, what is the actual trajectory of the system? Or dynamics, right? So how about optimal trajectory? Hmm? Well, by optimal trajectory, I mean the you have to look at the state variables and say, well, now that I know what u I need to apply, what is going to be x1 and x2, right? So you need to solve basically the system, the state system, the, the dynamical system, right? For the state variables, knowing what u is. So, so what's the best? Well, in this case, obviously it's, it's just 1. So you just have to solve x double prime equals 1. Notice that I'm not even doing the system. I'm doing. I'm, I'm going back to just the original second order equation. In this case, I mean. and of course with initial conditions x of zero is zero and x dot of zero is zero. I think this was right. So x of t is is it t square over two? You have to integrate twice, right? So the outcome of, of any optimization problem like this is um, should be list the optimal control, u star, optimal trajectory, x star, and what else? We plot it, u star versus time, we plot x star versus time. What else would you would you like to see? The cost, the 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 value of the of the of the objective function, right? The maximum value, right? So j max of j, right, over all u's is going to be j evaluated at. At the u star and x star, at the u star and x, and, and, and x star. Now, as I said, the optimal may not depend on on x or on u explicitly, but in this case, I think it does, right? So it's oops. This is the derivative. Okay. So this is what uh, we didn't compute. What is the x dot? It's just t, right? So this is capital T minus the integral of one half integral of u. We said is one, so it's just one, right? So it's one half t. Okay. Whatever that. That's, capital T is given, right? So again, this uh, this kind of completes that. Um, the problem saying choose any other control you your your objective will always be below this one of the two terms will be well either x dot is going to be smaller I don't know there's a balance there's going to be this balance okay and again, your, uh, in your homework, there's not going to be, I mean, this is not going to be the answer, right? Each problem has a different system, different, okay? But the steps are identical. 
Um, and that's actually, I'm going to contradict myself uh, right now, saying that the steps are the same, but sometimes you'll be faced with, for different problems, you'll be faced with, with different challenges. Okay? So, and that, that, that uh, brings me to the second problem, and I want to talk about that uh, in your homework. Uh, so let's kind of clarify here there was no uh, no constraints for the control, right? But imagine we had a constraint for the control. That is, maybe you could not be one. Maybe you could be between zero and a half. Okay? Question is, what do we have? Well, what kind of control would we have? Well, maybe most likely it's going to be a half, right? Or maybe not. Who knows? One has to really go through this and figure out uh, exactly, right? So you could have some extreme values for the control if you have constraint control. So last time we talked about a simple problem, so I guess um, I want to talk about this problem now, um, where you have only one state variable, okay? And you have a logistic growth, so that's like the fish population. And then you have a control that's kind of embedded in this harvest rate. Harvest rate is written here, kind of obscure here, but it's really proportional to level of effort that you put in the, the fishing and the fish population, right? I mean, you can put a lot of effort. If there's no fish, they're gonna, not going to harvest anything, and vice versa, right? So this is, if you think about it, it's like a comp predator prey type model, right? It's it's a it's how much you put and how much the fish are. I mean, it's right. It's a kind of the it's proportional to the interaction between the two. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's this. Okay, and the objective to be maximized is of this form. And we talked about that's basically revenue minus cost, right? Profit. But it's some sort of cumulative profit. You integrate it, right? Because your U may actually be time dependent. So your H is time dependent, so your it's kind of instantaneous profit, but right? It's like incremental profit. So for instance, this integrand could be sometimes positive, sometimes negative, right? That's okay as long as the total balance in your account is is maximum possible possible right so it's it's summed up okay uh, let's see so what's the most important thing about this is that we have constraints on you okay and the constraints are You know, can, I mean, can be positive. Uh, I mean, it has to be positive, but it cannot exceed a certain value. Okay. All right. So, so this problem is actually the same as the one uh, for which you have the handout. So I want to I want to kind of uh, go through this. Now, by the way, th remember these are I give you four four different examples. And um, the first example, this uh, landing probe on Mars, is is very similar to the one we talked about last time. Just a, little, a step up in complication because you have um, you know you have some gravity gravity and you have some friction, right? But other than that. So I, I, I'll, I'll let you kind of go through this. Um, insects of optimizers is kind of an interesting problem, but maybe I'll leave it for Wednesday. Um, fairy problem is actually quite a difficult problem of steering basically a, 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 a ferry across a river to cross a river, right, when you have some current. Uh, and again, you want to do it in minimum time possible, I believe, right? No. No, you actually, I think you want to, what is it? 
Yeah, you want to hit, but in minimum time. You want, you want to reach the other end, but not like forever, right? You know, it doesn't you know wander around. You have to, right? So you want to point. You basically want to point it, the angle sort of in the. And the speed. The speed is constant. Yeah, the speed is constant. I mean, uh, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, well. That's okay. That's the first. I mean, that's complicated enough, right? Yeah, it's just a model. Exactly. Uh, next thing is, yeah, you you have to control not only the angle but also the speed. You're right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So again, we'll leave this for Wednesday. Um, okay. So we have ten minutes. So let's see how much we can do of this. So notice that this is exactly your, your homework problem, right? So basically, um, let's see how it's set up. Can everybody see here or no? Um, so what you see is that actually there is something that needs to be done by hand just like before uh, and then at some point you need something needs to be done on a computer because it's just going to be too hard uh, to grasp everything by hand so how many state variables do we have one so the Hamiltonian is just going to be one shadow variable x and u and all you have to do is just take this right hand side multiply by psi I think I changed the order but it's psi times this Plus the integrand, right? The integrand. Okay. Now this looks like a mess, uh, but the very next thing is to, I want to maximize that with respect to u. Okay. And again, keep everything in the perspective. What you want to do, you want to find out everything as quickly as possible. So I want to find where can I achieve this maximum. Well, it's clearly a function. As a function of u is linear, so. So it will be either increasing or decreasing with respect to u, right? At some point it will be flat, but but as you'll see, that's not going to happen. It's just going to be for an instant. So it's not going to. Most of the t's uh, is going to be either positive or negative. Who's going to uh, increasing or decreasing? Who's going to say whether it's increasing or decreasing? The coefficient of u, which is this expression, right? Now again, this expression is uh, well. It looks complicated enough, but Q, P, and C are you know P is a price per unit, C is a cost per unit, Q is proportionality. I mean, constant of that appears in the harvest rate, right? So these are these are parameters. These are supposed that you that you know of, right? So the only thing that influences the sign of this coefficient is x and psi, right? At each time t. Well, can we leave with the idea that even though we don't know x and psi, that we'll find them later? And then in the meantime, con conclude that, that u star, the maximum u is going to be, is going to have to be one of the extremes um, either zero if this thing is negative, right, or 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 the maximum that u can possibly be if it's positive, right? So that's what we say here, basically. Okay. By the way, this kind of control is called bang bang because it's either one or the other, right? I always like to give this example when you drive your car, take a curve. How do you control your car? Do you do it continuously? Or do you do it discontinuous, right? Why, why do you do this continuously?
<laughs> I don't know. There's got to be some penalty. I think there's a penalty of you, your brain needs to uh, work the least amount of time, right? It's just it's always a constant adjustment. Um, of course, you don't do it all the way around, but uh, but it's sort so, so like this. Okay, uh, let's let's quickly. Okay, so so again. Realizing that you might, for certain problems, you might have to work with the complicated kind of expressions that come from the state system or from, from your objective function. Uh, I think you can move kind of forward and say, here's the system for, for, for psi problem. Okay, so you see this. The answer is almost there. We know what, how, how we need to either fish or not fish, but we don't know when to switch, right? So this kind of expression is going to be, I think we call it the switch function. And somewhere I call it the switch function here, right? So it's a function of, of the state and the adjoint variable. OK? Well, how do we actually um, decide on this? Well, here's how you do it. Can use p-plane. Okay, so um, by the way, uh, I think when you type this in, you should save it so you don't have to type it again. Um, so the first one, go ahead. You can save this, yes. Uh, you just go here and say, save the current system. OK. Um, and then you can load it tomorrow. OK. Um, OK, so so what was Psi? Psi was a little bit more complicated, right? So Psi was minus P times Q times uh, U. Right? Plus R times 1 minus 2 times X over K minus Q times, I believe U. Let, let me make sure of this. OK, here it is, right? So one has to type in correctly here. Is that right? times psi. Okay, and we have to put the parameters. So we need to put the parameters. Q was 10 to the negative fifth, right? Uh, what else? P was, I don't know, some values. Q, 1. C is, I think we take it to be 1. Uh, anything else you see? K, 150,000, right? 250,000, thank you. OK, so that's pretty much it. And of course, we need to put, oh, yeah, thank you. R is 0 0.05. So now we need to put uh, x min and x max. So see that there's always a challenge. How should we put psi, right? We don't know what how big psi is. So you can try various things. But in the end, what was that? Plot negative one to one. Okay, so uh, let's proceed here. Whoop. Okay. Oh yeah, of course. U is the most important one. Is the control. So. So what you have to do is to take u to be 0, proceed. OK, maybe arrows are not always good, so you try lines. OK, and you get this picture. OK, what is this picture saying? Well, the picture is saying if u would be always 0, so no control, no harvesting, right? This is what the fish population would do. Uh, well, and this is what a psi would do, right? But 
Uh, okay, so, and then you change, so this would be right, right? And again, remember, you don't know anything about Psi, right? All you know is that Psi at, cap at final time T has to be that constant, right? That's the coefficient in front of the, in the objective function, which is? zero, right? So you want that, you know that psi has to be at final time t equal to zero, right? Well, obviously you're never going to be able to find psi to be zero unless you start with psi equals zero, right? But that's the whole point, is that you're going to have u to be not, also not zero, okay? So the, the, the important thing about this is now to do the same for, for u equals maximum 5,000, right? And then know how to combine the two. How do you combine the two? When do you switch from the one to the other? Well, it's when that switch function has switches from being positive to negative. And that's done by going to uh, solution and doing level curves, plot level curves, and just put your function, which was what was that function again? I'll be done in a second here. So, what was that function? Whoops. Switch function. QXP minus psi. Q x times p minus psi minus c. Okay, and you say let uh, people and decide now. I only want to see where it's actually zero, where it's positive and where it's negative. So you can put negative one. You can put a vector like like MATLAB. Okay. So you see what happens? You see basically the regions where psi is positive and where it's negative, right? It's like plotting a inequality, right? Okay, so now the trick part the tricky part is to erase all solutions. And now remember when you when this is when is u zero? When is the u zero valid? When the switch function is negative, right? It's negative above this curve, so how do you get that face portrait? If you hit here, you see, if you hit here, the best thing is to hit it on the curve, but you want to be able to erase, take an eraser, actually erase the ones that are not valid, right, below this. So the way I do it, and I don't know if it's the best way, but is the following, is I take uh, the solution direction to be forward okay until it hits a certain point and then I have to do the well of course here is there's no issue here right but there's going to be a certain value where I have to do backward that okay it's really a bad tool. I mean, from that perspective, it's really a bad tool. But, uh, right? So, so you have to be able to know wh which direction you should go so that you stay in the valid region for this, right? Same thing with the other one. Last thing is, how do you decide <coughs> uh, which one goes where? And I'm out of time, so, so I'll just display this. And if you need to leave, leave. Um, Basically, what you need to do is you need to follow the, start with an initial condition that was 150,000, right? Initial, initial condition, initial population. And see if you can start with 150,000 on the x, so that at final time t you reach psi equals zero. It's kind of a game you can play um, to some extent using the, the face portraits.
the combination of the face portraits. Um, but we'll continue on Wednesday on this. Okay? But you can, you can kind of try to reproduce this at least. Because uh, your homework is to take this but change the initial condition. Instead of 150,000, do 50,000 and 200,000. So do some sort of sensitivity. Then change the price and then change the cost. You know, all of this will, t will actually change the conclusions. The question is how much? Thank you.